How yes. old were you when you when you first realised that you were in the wrong body? Um, two years old. Wow. And what, what, what was that feeling then, Nikki? You're, you're two years old. I mean, sort of the whole world is a sort of a, a, a sort of a crazy experience um, for little kids like that. But what were you feeling at that age that made you feel like something was was wrong? Um, well, that age, I was pretty much gravitating towards hanging out with the, with my young cousins, my female cousins rather than my male cousins. I was always playing with the dolls. I was taking them from my cousins and hiding them under my bed. Um, and I would always hide myself. When my mother changed my diaper, I would always cover myself. You know, like I didn't feel right with having the male genitalia. Mm -hmm. I would always sit down in the toilet and, and just never stood up, you know. So it just felt like I was born in the wrong body. And, and how were your parents during all of this? What was their reaction? Um, I kind of kept it, I just kept it a secret because I didn't know what was wrong with me. Um, there wasn't really literature or, or books or knowledge or TV shows or anything about it at that time. So it was like new for me and my mom didn't know anything because I kept it a secret. So at what point then, Nikki, did you feel comfortable enough to start expressing this, this female side that you had? What sort of age were you and what was the reaction to the people all, from the people around you? Um, I started, I think, in my high school years. I started coming home, dressing up in my mom's clothes, putting on makeup. I would do like a normal pretty boy makeup in high school and I was called cover girl in homeroom, fat, queer, gay, you know, so... It was a lot to deal with, but I wanted to express myself because I just wanted to be me. Mm. Absolutely, which is extraordinarily brave, especially, like as you said, during the, in that time, in that era, nobody was talking about it. Mm. It's a lot more prevalent now, Absolutely, isn't it? and People... teenage years, which are complicated enough as they are. So Absolutely. you get to about sort of 17, 18, and it becomes a bigger thing, this, doesn't it? And you start realising that you could actually transition from a boy to a girl. Uh, what was that process mm. like? Um, I mean, it's not easy. You know, this journey of, of living your life as a trans person is, is, is a very long journey. You know, it's very hard. Um, there's a lot of downfalls you will have. You have to start the process with hormone therapy, um, seeing a doctor, a psychiatrist, make sure that you're really going to make the right decision. It's, it's not just like a light switch and you mm. say, oh, I'm going to be a girl. Like, it doesn't work like that, you know? It was a lot of, like, thinking, like, really long, did I really want to take this journey and start my life as a woman? Absolutely, because once, once you start, you can't stop. And I know that you were 17, is that right, when you first started taking yeah. hormones? But how old were you when you Correct. started your first sort of physical appearance changing, your first procedure, your plastic surgery procedure? Um, I think I was, I was 18. OK, and, and what part of you was that? I just did my nose uh -huh. first time at uh, the local clinic in New York City, Mount Sinai Hospital. So um, it was covered by med my medical insurance. And then it just took off from there. And then I did my, my breast. And then I went to Ecuador and I did my Adam's apple and I did another nose job. It was just, it kept going on and on and on. So this, <laughs> clearly, so you've, you've transitioned to be a woman and you're obviously feeling much more comfortable physically and emotionally about being a woman, but now you want to make these changes to your body. Uh, you, they, they start with yeah. the nose. You went to Ecuador. Why did you go to Ecuador? Is it, is it cheaper there, or is it because you could find a doctor that at was willing to mm. At the time, it's, it was, like, cheaper, you know? And, and you don't know any better. There wasn't, like, the amount of doctors that are doing such amazing work nowadays, you know? There wasn't doctors that did full FFS at that time. There was just like, you do little by little by little. And what does that, sorry, Nikki, what does FFS stand for? FFS is facial feminization surgery. You know, I feel like a lot of my surgeries was pretty much triggered from being bullied in high school, mm. um, you know, being teased and picked on, you know, about my looks, because I was an ugly duckling. I was not always beautiful. You know, I was the ugly kid in the hallway being, you know, beat up and stuff and spit on. So, you know, I, when I transitioned, it felt so good. The attention and the look that I desired, it kept getting better and better and better. And in my mind, the way I envisioned myself in the mirror, 
it made me happy. I was like, yes, wow, I'm finally beautiful, you know? And that's what I was addicted to. But why, Nikki, what lots of people will be saying, but why Barbie? Barbie is a plastic doll that uh, little girls and some boys, obviously, play with and enjoy dressing up and stuff. Why specifically did you want to look like her? Why not just sort of find a way of, of feeling comfortable and looking like yourself? Um, I, I guess I got obsessed when I was a little boy, you know, playing with the doll, and I would just used to look at it, and I was like, I would dream, like, about, oh, my God, what if I look like a Barbie one day? And I was like, you know what? That's going to be my dream. I want to look like a doll, you know? And... And you I I just feel like anyone should live their lives however they feel fit mm -hmm. and comfortable and happy. Whatever makes anyone happy. If you want to be a boy and wear makeup and, and wear heels down the street, that's, your, you know, let, let, it, yes. let them be. I, are you looking for Ken at this point? <sighs> <laughs> um, I've been trying, <laughs> I've been trying, uh, you know, to me, a lot of Kens that I have found have been gay, so it's hard because I feel like every, the most hottest men in the world are all gay. They always um, are. But I, <laughs> they always are, but I'm trying to say optimistic and yes, I would love to find a counterpart, my soulmate, my bestie, my best friend to, that looks like a Ken, I mean, yeah. why not? <laughs>